I feel Bill Bryce's presence so strongly in these galleries, but nowhere more than here with this case of drawings. Bill would have called them notations, I suspect, because all of Bill's art, I think, began with drawings. They were meditations for him, studies in form and color and line and idea for which he prepared larger drawings and paintings. These look to me almost like Persian miniatures, um, gardens, skeletons, flowers, in which he decides how to divide a space into two or three or five or six or eight, as he would do his larger works. Uh, almost a kind of Da Vinci code, a secret code. They were, for him, a way of thinking about the world and thinking about his work. They were absolutely at the core of his practice. Uh, sometimes museum and gallery people are out to fool us, and just because these two sets of works are adjacent and are both in cases, don't be surprised that they are entirely different. The ones I just talked about are private notes from Bill to himself. The works in this case, on the other hand, are highly, perfectly finished works uh, meant to be shown to the public and are rapturously beautiful and are really all about color. Um, these uh, five works in the case are as beautiful as anything <laughs> I know of Bill's work, and almost all of the work I know of Bill's are beautiful. Um, they all display the characteristic images and symbols of Bill's work, though this one also reminds me very much that Bill was probably looking at Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Algers, uh, uh, and is so beautiful in its peaches and um, blues. Bill was as great a colorist as his uh, great mentor Matisse. Uh, these are so wonderful with their bones and their careful, careful balance and their roses uh, and their columns. Uh, Bill, everywhere in his work, was playing the most beautiful and interesting games of weight and division and structure, and then on top of that, layering these luscious, elegant, delicate color. So there's a kind of lyricism that is lying on top of a fierce and almost primitive strength that gives the work both power and delicacy that's so beautiful. It seems to me the absolute center of Bill's power as an artist, this struggle or this tension in Bill between that thing that all of us loved about him, the almost uh, Fred Astaire lyricism uh, in his personality, and then a kind of fierce, intense, perhaps even dark, sexual energy that lay beneath that so that you got the best or the most tantalizing of both worlds. And indeed, when we come to some of the big Greek style drawings, I want to talk about that, that struggle more. Uh, these tend more toward the lyrical uh, and the playful and the beautiful, but there are a lot of works in this exhibition that are far more directly demonic. In this beautiful drawing, you see Bill Bryce at his most directly erotic. Uh, you see a goddess in three different views, um, and you see her in her most feminine 
with a rounded, perhaps even pregnant belly, with a clitoris and labia on full view, with a rounded buttocks, and you see exactly where you enter to the Eleusinian mysteries directly through her labial portals. This is a very, very ancient and very, very pregnant and erotic Greece, uh, long, long before we think of Greece as the center of the mind. But Bill had many colors and many tones in his art, and if you look just uh, at the other corner, you can see Bill at, uh, in a much lighter mood, uh, again in Greece, but almost channeling Saul Steinberg. Eeny, uh, meeny, miny, mo says the Greek oracle when you try to find out uh, the answer to its mysteries, uh, almost as if it's about to open out into a jazz routine on the piano or on the dance. Uh, but it's almost as if it's Jelly Roll Morton or, uh, I mean, you know, the, the dancer and the piano player, but it's just so jazzy, it seems to me. Uh, it's just so fun, so much fun, this piece. And it's, I love the fact that these are, I mean, this is so serious, and that's so playful, and that they're right across from each other makes me laugh. I mean, I love the juxtaposition, and it's a juxtaposition you saw in Bill, too. He could go from just very serious and sometimes a bit pontifical to doing voices and you know it took me a little bit of time to see that side of him that mother in him uh, because when you saw Bill at first he looked priestly or or uh, austere and then all of a sudden you saw that he was just wildly funny and uh, even dangerously <laughs> funny. <laughs> and you wondered if he did you when you were out of the room. But anyway, I love, I love this because it's so witty. Uh, and I, I find that one rather daunting because it is so extremely sexual. Uh, so I like those juxtapositions that you find in an artist work. So let's do the last one. This beautiful drawing seems to me a kind of quintessence of Bill's work. It, it really is like having one's own Greek temple. Uh, what Bill has done, either because he saw it when he went to Greece, or because he understood that what we have now uh, in Greece is not the original Greek temple, but a kind of scattered uh, remains of a Greek temple, is we have a kind of reconstructed or partial Greek temple. But the nice thing about a reconstruction is that the artist, who is the new architect of the reconstructed temple, um, gets to emphasize the kind of temple he now wants. And it seems to me that what Bill has done beautifully, magically, is to create a kind of Venus Omphalos of Venus of the navel uh, to emphasize the kind of cult statue that he wants. This is the center of the world, a, a kind of cult statue to, to this particular kind of Venus. It's just so beautiful and this room is filled with variants that Bill played with color and with the negative to the positive of this same kind of drawing and the cross-hatching that he does and the, and the beautiful sort of grays and blacks and uh, that he gets. I mean, even his black and white drawings look like they're in color and his color drawings look like they are black and white drawings. I, Bill is just a genius at, at, the, at these drawings and, and it's impossible to think he's not here. Uh, but they're so very, very beautiful and, and so very mysterious. And uh, it's that sort of mystery in these drawings and this sort of taking them out of the present world that uh, 
to answer questions about the present world that makes them so refreshing and makes them want, you want to come back and back and back to, to ponder their, their mysteries. It, it's why we keep going back to Euripides uh, for that kind of elegant savagery.